Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love and worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out, on Friday, the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday, a lance pierced his side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday, he was crowned with thorns, and today he, was ador he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and has given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace, clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light see you, the true bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Daughters of the Nations. Son, 
O Lamb of God, who sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks. O incense of forgiveness, we worship you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life Lord our God you reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. Together with eternal glory, this saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, 
we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Hallelujah. Baruch Moda the Holy Land to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Burn this incense. Kitty of this sun. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Evangelist Luke writes, Now that very day, two of them were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? And they stopped, looking downcast. And one of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What things? And they said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and in word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we had been hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and they did not find his body. They came back and they reported that they had indeed seen a vision of the angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village, 
to which they were going, he gave the impression that he would go further on. And they urged him, stay with us. It is already nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and they returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. For us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he became invisible from them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today on this Sunday, which commemorates Emmaus, which of course takes place on the day of the resurrection. So it's important though, even though we're reading this three weeks now into the season of Easter, that this takes place on Easter Sunday itself. And I'd like us to consider today, just briefly, to think about presence, sight, and ascent. Presence on the first thing, and we've mentioned this numerous times as the Gospels show us after the resurrection of our Lord, that the people who are around our Lord, first of all, he appears to no one who did not have faith. He does not appear to the priest. He does not appear to the Sanhedrin. He only appears to those who had followed him during his life, those who had faith or had had faith before the whole catastrophe of being put to death. But what we realize is that those people who are disciples, as frail and perhaps at that moment as discouraged and loss of faith they may be at that moment, that when our Lord appears to them, the disciples see our Lord according to their spiritual disposition. And this we've mentioned numerous times. And Emmaus is the perfect example. This story is, own, is proper to St. Luke. None of the other gospels tell us about this episode with the two disciples. St. Mark makes a reference to it in one line of his gospel, but with no details, just saying our Lord appeared to two on their way. And the reason why I wanted to mention about presence is because this aspect of the spiritual life, we mentioned it a bit last week, that we pray for the opening of our eyes to be able to see our Lord because the risen Christ is present to us right now. And in our lives, he works. We are his disciples. But our disposition has very much the impact of how we see or even recognize our Lord. And that's why the one thing I want to call to your attention in this uh, Gospel of St. Luke is the way that the terms are used in the Greek. That when they're walking along and they're all upset and they're sad and when they're asked about the things that have taken place three days ago, we're told they're downcast. They're like, they hate this story, it's terrible. Well, like we see today, you hate the story, but we'll watch the news for hours on end. So the same thing, they hate everything that's happened three days ago, but they keep talking about it as they walk along for the miles to get back home. 
But we're told by St. Luke that their eyes were held, their eyes were shut, their eyes were held, and they did that they should not know him. So when he appears to them, and again, it's not like he just appears in the middle of the road, it's a man who walks up to them as they're there. And they stop at first and there's the exchange. But St. Luke uses a terminology, he doesn't say they don't recognize him. He says that their eyes are held, their eyes are closed, that they should not know him. They were unable to see him. Obviously they visibly see the man they're talking to. But the presence, the reality of our Lord in their lives, they don't see. And they continue to walk for miles. So surely this conversation goes on for at least a couple hours including the fact of when they arrive at home. And that's why when I bring up the detail is because they do not, they continue talking, they begin the meal out of reverence to him as a guest. He's the one, clearly he's a man of importance and learning, he's just taught us all of the scripture. And notice the term that Saint Luke also uses, that he opened the scriptures to us. These are texts that they have heard numerous times. They know these prophecies. They've heard them. They may not know them in great detail any more than anybody else in Israel did, but these are not dumb men. But our Lord, for the first time in their lives, opens these scriptures to them and they finally understand what they mean, which is why the question comes up after all these prophecies. So shouldn't Christ have suffered first and then entered into his glory? We have no answer recorded of what they say, but we do know that when they arrive at their house and our Lord makes it that he's going to keep going on the rest of his trip, ready to say goodbye, they say to him, no, you have to stay with us. It's becoming evening and the day is almost done. You just can't keep going. So on one level, it's just, you can't keep traveling through the middle of the night, you should stay with us. But the other aspect is also to say that the evening of your unbelief has also come to an end. It's arriving at the end. Because of course we're told at the dinner when our Lord does the solemn Jewish blessing for the meal and breaks it, breaks the bread, they all of a sudden for the first time see him and recognize him at that point. Clearly this has a Eucharistic implication to it, which we won't dwell on. But it's there where we're told by St. Luke that their eyes are opened. Now they see who's in front of them. This man who's been with them for hours, now they see who he is. This is very much like in our spiritual lives. We kind of bumble along through life. We don't develop our prayers perhaps as well as we should. We bumble through and we forget that the hand of God is on our lives all day long. Every moment of our existence, God is present. I had to write to someone recently this week because he's all worked up in a tizzy for obvious reasons. So I wrote him back and I said, everything is in the hand of God. And providence, the way the world and the universe goes, providence is the face, the external face of the hidden goodness. When we understand that, we begin to see. And that's the importance of these disciples of Emmaus. And when I first used the opening quotation, I wanted to use it more as it's translated literally from the Greek. Because we're told that when he breaks the bread, blesses and gives it to them, we're told their eyes are opened and they know him now, they recognize him. And then the phrase is, and he became invisible from them. When it says translate, I think it was translated as vanish. So you get this impression, poof, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like a magic trick and now he's gone from the dinner table. That's not the reality that's being portrayed in the gospel. What is being portrayed by the reality of St. Luke in writing the gospel is to say they no longer see him. He doesn't say he's gone. He says that he is unseen from them. They no longer see him, but he doesn't say that his presence is absent. It's a very important point. We may not see our Lord, but our Lord is at action and at every moment. Apparently, the governor of New York and all of his venerable um, 
news broadcast that he does every day, apparently said recently, the numbers have come down. We've brought the numbers down, not God, not faith. And you're thinking, really? You just have to blaspheme on television for this? And in any case, you're stupid. Because God's in charge of everything. And that is in relation to the, to the man, to the good man that I wrote. I said, everything is in the hands of God. And providence is the external face of hidden goodness. And so when we look at this idea of presence, it's a great importance to understand that none of this is getting out of God's control. Everything is in the hands of God. And God is infinite love, and God is infinite goodness. That's all we need to know. And everything else just follows suit as a consequence. Now when we mention the sight, that's the whole idea of being able to see that presence, that hand of God in his providence. The third thing that I wanted to leave you with was the notion of a sense. I had actually written up a bulletin. I worked on it. I don't know what happened on the computer for, for so the last two hours, because it takes me hours to do this thing that you put in the canary cage after you briefly glance over it. Or the number of parishioners who don't know what's going on. I said, it was in the bulletin for the last three weeks. Oh, I don't read the bulletin. Anyways, I spend weeks every, every week putting together that bulletin. And I had finished on Friday doing the last two hours on the reflections. Not writing the reflections. They'd already been written and reread and reworked. And I worked on them, hopefully, finally, for the last two hours on it. All these emails were coming in. I don't know what I did. I'm not tech savvy. And I'm working on this, but clearly autosave wasn't working either because these emails coming, it wasn't the emails. Something came up, I was, trying to, I was trying to download electronic tulips into a little box in the bulletin to thank you all for your great generosity at Easter time. Even in the midst of all of this, there were still cards and gifts that came in for your, your humble pastor at Easter time. So I was writing up and I thought, well, let's make it look a little Eastery. So I'm downloading electronic tulips, cartoon tulips and they wouldn't download. And so the little box pops up and says whatever it said that you wanted to do, well, these emails are popping in all along the side of it, and I obviously pushed the wrong box. And the whole thing disappeared. So then at that point, that was profoundly depressing when I went back to look at the original file, and it's, it's where it was two hours before. I'm not doing this again. In fact, I can't do this again. It's like a sermon. They're never going to be the same. They're never going to be the same. Even when we have Saturday and Sunday, they're never exactly the same. And so we lost it. And then after just profound depression, I got other things to do. So I start working on other stuff so you didn't get a bulletin. Sorry. But my heartfelt thanks are given to you for your generosity at Easter time. That was still there. Whether you have cartoon tulips in next week's bulletin or not, well, I don't know. We'll see. Now, the reason why is the bulletin is going to talk about this notion of the divine offices in the church, and you'll read them next week. Throughout the centuries, as visitors would go to the Lebanon mountains and through the areas in Syria at the time, many of the visitors, say from Rome or whatever, that make an apostolic visit, they would go and they're filing their report. And in their reports, they file and again, over the centuries, not just at one occasion, but over the centuries, they would talk about the fact of how the Maronites would work in their fields, their vineyards, do their work, do their toils, and then in the evening they would be in the parish church and they would sing the evening office with the parish priest. Obviously not every single one, but it was noticeable of the number of the faithful who would be in their church at night, not for mass, not to get anything, but to sing the praises of God. And the notion of what the divine office is, this official prayer of the church, is very profound. And of course, that kind of report, when we read the history of the Maronites, is very beautiful. Now, having been inspired by apparently the discussions that are going on remotely in the city councils of Turin and Milan, everyone's realizing the sky is blue. In Turin, it was always kind of like a gray, blue, Milan, the same thing. They're industrial cities. Now apparently you can see the Alps into the north and see the snow in the Alps. Amazing. No one's seen that for years. 
So they've decided that in this interim where all the streets are empty, let's see if we can reconfigure the cities and make more of our little streets in the middle of the city pedestrian and begin to cut down the traffic because this is actually kind of nice. And as I've mentioned to you, apparently the dolphins are beginning to return, coming into the canals of Venice. That's very impressive. And so a few years ago, when I first arrived here, and I talked to Bishop Gregory about this, I said, would you mind at some point if, in order to open the Lord's Day, we did our very Eastern thing, which is to sing Ramsho on Saturday evening and then have the Mass? And he said, no. So as I said, inspired by Milan, Turin, and these other cities who are clearly trying to say, what can we draw good out of this for the future? We don't have a mass now in the evening on Saturdays for the moment, but we will again. But in the meantime, and I've already talked to our, our honorable seminarian, that coming next Saturday for the Feast of Our Lady of the Lebanon, we're going to start singing Ramsha every Saturday night at four o'clock. And then when we have the possibility and we add the mass back, it will be immediately following Ramsha. You can either come for Ramsha and just stay through the whole liturgy, or you can come in late and be there for when, for when the divine liturgy of the Kordoban begins, either way. But from now on, this idea of the ascent of the heavenly Jerusalem, we will honor the day of the Lord, the eighth day. That's the things that we've talked about over these last weeks. That we will begin this coming Saturday for the Feast of Our Lady of the Lebanon, to begin with the office of Our Lady at 4 p.m. on Saturday. No one needs to come. We're not making any public declarations about it. But Jacob and I, we won't have the doors locked. I don't know that we'll have handouts at first this, this, this week around. But just to have the idea of the future plan. And then come May, the end of May, or whenever we're able to get back to a little bit more normal, we'll just have our liturgy back on the vigil that we have on Saturday evening. But now it will follow immediately Ramsho. And Ramsho in the Aramaic just means evening. It's exactly the same word as we use for the Latin church of Vespers. Vespera means evening. So it's just, there is a bit of a, a novelty. But it's a way of retrapping part of our Maronite ancestors' glory. Coming out of a monastic tradition, it's very normal that we should be a little more monastic. Doesn't mean that we're practicing poverty or any of those other things by vows but that our people should love some of the things of monastic life more than other Catholics do, because we come out of the venerable tradition of our father, St. Marin. And when we have that, then we understand the evening context. I leave you with that quotation of the men in Emmaus who are moving along, hearing the scriptures open to them. And when it looks like our Lord is just going to keep going farther, they say, no, stop, stay with us. This is Ramsho. Stay with us, it's evening. Stay with us because it's towards evening and the day is now far spent. Let us repose for a moment is the sense and to be with you in your presence, that is Ramsho. And may this office of God's praises bring many blessings and graces upon our beautiful little parish. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat>
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the court of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. <coughs> Itel vot ma deb he da loho, al vot al loho dam khade taliu. Weinem su go tai vot a loche ul al baitoch vesku deb chayek po od kohod sheets for the resurrection transfer him the Lord Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As you remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen.
We continue on page 876, the Anaphora of John Chrysostom, 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name, who deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we, who have remained in your divine love, be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace, love, love and faith, faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God of peace be with us. O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O oh Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who, are, who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming, to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your Majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. And 
بار خوب قاده وقصویا برتر میدا و کار و ماره صاب خلم مهنه کل خون خون و دنی تا فخر و دیم دخل و فیکون و خلم ساگیه میت قصی و میتی هم خوصویان خامه و خویدن علم علمین قن القس دمسخ و من خمره و من مایو دارخ و قاده یا بر تلمی داو کار و مارا سابشتا و مهنه کل خو خون و دنی تا دمه و دیلا دیاتی کی خدا تو تخلف کن و خلف ساگیه اتشد و میتی هم خوصوی و خومه و خوی دن قلم علمین Do this in memory of me Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup You remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called to look with mercy upon us, in your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood, so make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, O mighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, Profess our faith in you and we ask you. Have compassion on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray.
body of Christ our God be for us a pledge of life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, O Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, the venerable priest, the chaste deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully, with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your Holy Church to your Son, glorious Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and them. Grant us, O Lord. Do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will. That in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy, that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity. We may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins, and for a new life, O Lord our God, to you be the glory forever. And also the angels have come to stand with us at the holy altar. Sacrifice before us. O come, receive him, the saving man of God. 
again and again we thank you, Lord, and grace God, you for giving us your body to live and God's drink above of all people. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and for the graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us. Protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the holy cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Oh,